What's the story, everyone? Welcome back to GEA Fan TV. I hope you're all keeping wonderfully well. My name is Aaron. The Championship Structure and National Football League and Hurling Structure has been announced for 2021. Of course, it was announced uh, about a week ago. It was announced on December 21st, two days, of course, after the All-Ireland Football Final. But, of course, obviously, you know, it was a couple of days before Christmas and there was so much going on all around, you know, compared... You had obviously, you obviously had the Football Final reaction to that. You know, everything being discussed in terms of football and hurling, team of the year and whatnot. So I didn't really get a chance to make a video on this until now. But yeah, what I thought I would do is really run through the overview for 2021. How the National Football League and National Hurling League will look like in 2021. And of course, uh, you know, some of the key important dates, some of the reaction as well. You know, obviously the all Ireland Football Final has been set for next summer. As opposed to obviously in 2020 where the championship was decided for the winter. So it will be played in summer now. So what we'll do is we'll really run through the article that the GEA themselves put out in relation to this. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, so what we'll do is have a look at the article here. So 2021 League and Championships Overview. Uh, uploaded on Monday 21st of December 2020 by the official GEA themselves. Uh, they went through a number of key points really so we'll just kind of run through them all first of all so number one here first of all providing a meaningful closed season downtime and i suppose there was some discussion obviously in you know going into january february kind of earlier in the year after the uh, club championships had finished up there was some discussion kind of towards the end of the summer would they would there of course be leinster club and ulster club football championships and hurling championships etc run in january and february because obviously we didn't get them in 2020 um, and in the end, I think the GEA has made the right decision. I think, you know, at the end of the day, these players do need a break. And to continuously have so much football and to essentially have, you know, club football championships, you know, provincial club football championships ran by an inter-county championship and then another club championship in 2021, it'd be very, very hard to see where a lot of these players who let's not forget are not professional athletes they are amateur athletes they don't get paid for this so i think at the end of the day it is the the right decision and um, so yeah it says here no return to collective senior inter-county training before january 15th uh, it will be interesting to see if there's any rule breakers you know of course we've seen that last year where a couple of teams started training before january or before you know the, the selective dates and whatnot and there was a bit of uh, a fuss kicked up about it i think personally there won't be I think at the end of the day, you know, for a lot of teams, they will just want to rest. They will want to relax. Maybe for some counties who were knocked out of the championship quite early, maybe Kerry, maybe Galway, for example, might want to get back training sooner rather than later. But I think those rules will have to be respected and you'd have to feel that more than likely they will be. It says here, senior inter-county challenge games allowed from start of February due to COVID and associated risks no training or games that will involve an overnight stay are permitted during pre-season so yeah all inter-county challenge games will essentially be played within the province so for example if Dublin are playing a challenge game they'll probably play loud or something like that you know there's, there's going to be no traveling up and down the country etc etc uh, no return to collective inter-county under 20 hurling training before Friday April 2nd challenge games will be permitted from april 23rd and obviously the under 20 hurling championship is still ongoing at the moment alongside uh, the minor championships as well uh, also says here no provincial pre-season competitions and yeah that was very much expected obviously the likes of the mcgrath cup the walsh cup etc the is it the fbd connacht league um fbd insurance connacht league that obviously isn't going to go ahead as well and that's you know completely acceptable i don't think anyone's really too disappointed about that they are provincial uh, they are pre-season competitions at the end of the day. So we'll have a look now at the Allianz Leagues and the kind of format that is set for both football and hurling. So we'll start with football. So it will start, it will commence on February 27th, 28th. So right at the end of February is where it will commence. And kind of crazy really when you think about it, you know, 2020 has literally just wrapped up. And in less than two months, you know, less than two months from now, the National Football League will have, you know, the first round of fixtures will have been played, which is sounds kind of crazy, really. But I suppose that is how things work. And look, listen, it's great that we don't have to wait too long compared to usual. The league finals will, help, will take place on April 3rd and 4th. So obviously it's a much shortened season in terms of fixtures. A lot of teams will be playing a lot less games. And we will uh, get into that in just a moment. It says here, pickup weekend included, so provision to allow competition to run over 
by one week if necessary so if there is a weather situation maybe where you know a game gets postponed or a covid outbreak etc etc they've allowed one week here for it to run over and that's good as well because one of the big concerns in 2020 was what if you know games had to be postponed and we were very lucky nothing had to happen in the end but will we get as lucky in 2021 that's that's going to be the question so they're allowing things to run out run over by one week and um, could even be more than one week if possible depending on, on on how things would work there but it is good that the ga do have that put in place now we'll get into the very interesting thing so the divisions will be split into north and south so all the talk about uh you know specific counties getting split into and it is the leagues that get split into but of course you know the uh the county that we're talking about in dublin obviously a discussion for another day but how it will work is four teams in each group based on their geographical location three round robin games per team the top two in each group will go into the league semi-finals followed by the league final the bottom two in each divisional group will go to the uh will essentially play in a relegation semi-final and of course both well in many ways it's basically a relegation final in many ways because whoever loses either of the two games will essentially be relegated and um, the bottom teams in division four will uh, shield the semis and final and the provision uh, provision made to run either with london or without depending on restrictions so we'll have to see what happens there it looks very unlikely for london in all honesty but that's uh that's that's kind of just how the world very much is at the moment so uh we'll have a look at a post here that ga statsman of course who's been on the, the podcast a couple of times before he put out uh, a post here which basically just shows exactly what the uh what the the structure will look like so you'll see there you've got division one north donegal Tyrone, monaghan armagh division one south kerry dublin roscommon galway um, so this is how it will essentially work and look listen I did leave a comment on this post and I did say that it seems unfair on count on counties like Armagh for example who essentially are going up to division one and are playing three teams in their own province so that you know they're not really playing in division one but at the same time it does make sense you know we are going through a pandemic at the moment and it just this structure on you know whilst whether you agree with it or not it does make sense because at the end of the day Number one, teams don't have to travel so far. Number two, there's going to be no dead rubbers. There's going to be no situations like what we've seen in the National League last year where you had some counties that didn't want to fulfill fixtures and there was different things going on here and there. So we won't get that. Like Every game is going to be important. Every game is going to matter. And look, listen, this kind of structure in terms of the group stages with four teams might be something they could adopt going forward. Um, whether they do it in a geographical you know kind of format moving forward probably not but it could be something depending that they could do and look listen maybe that's a discussion for another day but this is essentially how it would work and look i'm not going to go through any you know predictions or anything like that we'll save that of course for for later down the line but it is interesting nonetheless like there's some teams in there that will be very very happy for example you're looking at division three south for example there you've got limerick wicklow offaly and tipperary so essentially one of those sides are going to get promoted um you know one of those teams are going to get promoted and originally you would have been looking at limerick wicklow offaly tipperary you've got two teams there have come up from division four offaly have you know they they avoided relegation from division three tipperary of course were very close to getting relegated as well look tipperary will be the favorites i'm sure because they obviously won the monster championship last year but you're looking at that and you're thinking what a great opportunity for, for some counties there but on the flip side of that you know you'll have some counties maybe in division three north Derry, for man along for cavan Derry and cavan probably the top two in, in that division and one of them won't get promoted but look listen that's just how it is that's unfortunately how it is going to work for 2021 and that is just going to be the structure unfortunately but it will be interesting to see you know how it how it essentially does all play out like you're looking at a lot of the southern divisions and some of them are, are tougher than others for example division one south kerry dublin roscommon galway you know kerry dublin galway probably you know three of the the top six in the country uh all playing there and one of them will will have to play a relegation playoff so it's interesting you know it is interesting but at the end of the day it does make sense considering uh 2021 and considering you know how how times are at the moment and yeah you know without doubt of course in in the coming weeks and you know i will have predictions out maybe in early february february or so you know i'll kind of 
leave my predictions of what I think is going to happen and who I think is going to get promoted and relegated, etc., etc. But nonetheless, it, it is going to be very interesting and it will be different without doubt. So I'll move on to hurling and there has been not really that many changes uh, in hurling to be honest. So kind of similar again. So the run from February 27, 28 is when the league will start. The final, of course, will be on April 10th, 11th. So it'll be the week after the uh, the football finals. Um, again, you know, there'll be a week in there. If they need to run over by a week, absolutely no problem. And the league will essentially run on the same basis as any other normal year. The only difference will be there'll be no league quarter or semi-finals. The Division 1 league final will be, will be the Division 1A winners against the Division 1B winners and the top two teams in all other groups by the relevant league final. So, again, that makes sense, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you kind of want the, the top two teams to be playing each other in each division, and, and that's essentially how it's going to work out here. So we'll move on to number three then, and it is, of course, the 2021 Football Championships, and the structure, of course, centred around the 2021 Championship this year. So I suppose, first of all, here, the Provincial Knockout Championships with backdoor qualifier system and Taltian Cup. So the qualifiers are back, which I'm very happy about personally. I think it's good to see the qualifiers back Indeed, I think they, they've served their purpose very, very well down the years. And I think it is good to see them back in place once again. The Taltian Cup is, uh, of course, it was supposed to be underway in 2020. It obviously got pushed back. It will be back in 2021. And we will get into the, the structure around that and how teams will essentially go into the Taltian Cup and how they can avoid going into the Taltian Cup as well. There'll also be no round-robin quarterfinals, so there will be no Super 8s. Um, I think when the Super 8s were announced, I think some a lot of people were excited about it, including me personally. I thought it would be something good, a good addition to get a lot of teams playing each other, get the likes of Dublin playing a Mayo, a Kerry, week in, week out. And whilst round-robin quarterfinals, you know, it might be something they could look at further down the line, but I do also think that personally... Uh, the structure or, or kind of how, how it worked it just didn't really work in the end didn't it? I don't think the Super 8 really worked in the end New York not involved in the Connacht Championship as this will take place in early April and impossible to plan for this currently decision on their participation in Taltian Cup to be made subject to restrictions uh, Taltian date if they are involved is 16th of May so yeah it will depend obviously on how how the world is I suppose how New York is how this whole COVID situation is, of course, uh, in the summer. Uh, it will depend on, on, on that, really. And look, listen, hopefully New York can be involved. I think for a county like them, well, I suppose they're not a county, are they? they're a city. But I think for, for GEA in New York, I think it would be huge for the GEA community in New York to be involved in the Taltian Cup. Um, it would be something great for them moving forward playing teams that are okay not on their same level because obviously you know new york new york are way down below in terms of quality for obvious reasons but look listen certainly just moving forward i think it would be great for the gea in new york in particular and i think that would be absolutely fantastic uh so round one of qualifiers to be limited to teams that do not make their provincial semi-final so we will get on to that in a moment um london participation to be a matter for connacht council based on restrictions so again it will depend on how the world is how the covid situation is in regards to london obviously the situation in the uk at the moment is very bad indeed so it's looking very unlikely that any british teams will be involved in the championship next year uh, what we will obviously have to wait and see how that all pans out in the coming weeks. Number four, 2021 Taltian Cup. And this is where we'll really delve into the structure of how the championship is going to work in 2021. So for teams in Division 3 and 4 of the Football League at the end of the 2021 league season, i.e. after promotion relegation process that do not reach their respective provincial finals. So... In other words, teams that have, well, basically what it says here, teams from Division 3 and 4 that, of course, have not reached their uh, respective provincial finals. Now, the only caveat to that is the likes of Cavan and Tipperary, because they won their provincial championships last year, they will be exempt from this. So they will, if they do lose in a provincial semi-final, they will go into the qualifiers and they won't go into the Taltian Cup. So... You know, it'll be interesting to see what Tipperary Cavan fans think of that. I think personally it's good. You know, you won your provincial championship last year. You are a Division Three team, but you will still be rewarded for what you achieved last year. And I think that's that's good indeed. 
the preliminary rounds to be organized if more than 16 eligible teams um, and then again it says here if New York are allowed to participate they will be drawn against an eligible team defeated in either round one or a quarter final of the provincial championship so it also says recommended that the provincial championships from the previous year regardless of whether their division three or four counties are automatically included uh, in the Samagor qualifiers even if yeah so basically what I said there so the likes of um, Tipperary and Cavan will be included in the Samagor regardless of how they do in their National League Championship of course and uh, and same for Mayo if Mayo were relegated from Division 2 they will still even if they don't of course make a provincial final in 2021 they'll still be included obviously very unlikely that Mayo does get relegated from Division 2 but I'm just saying if that was to happen then you know they'll still be in the Samagor Cup uh, Samagor qualifiers even if they were to be beaten in a potential Connacht semi-final, let's say, for example. So the rounds of the of the championship saying here, so preliminary round, round one, quarterfinals, semi-finals, and final. The preliminary round, if required, so it will depend again on New York, London, etc., etc. And then round one, quarterfinals, semi-finals, and final. Semi-finals on Sunday, June 6th, uh, Crow Park double header. Um, so that will be on Sunday, June 6th, and that they will be the All Ireland semi finals. So again, not not too far away at all. And then the uh, final to be the, to be the the final to be the curtain raiser to the All Ireland hurling semi final on June 26th, 27th. So it's actually even earlier than I expected. I actually expect I thought the final was in July, but it's actually the football final is in June. So the football final is before the all Ireland hurling final so that's that's interesting and the final is also going to be before the all Ireland hurling semi-final so that definitely is uh that definitely is very interesting nonetheless moving on to number five the 2021 lean mccarthy cup so the round robin system that was in place of course in 2019 and 2018 isn't there i don't think they've scrapped it all together i think it's just the because again of the whole scenario the fact that we need to get games finished uh, I think they've reverted away from the round robin. I'm a little bit surprised. I still feel like they could have got it done in many ways, but they have gone back to the to the knockout system that essentially was there last year. Um, the only difference compared to, to last year is that there will now be relegation from the Leinster Championship. And you can see here the teams, obviously, in Munster, Limerick, Waterford, Tipperary, Clare, Cork, Leinster, Kilkenny, Galway, Wexford, Dublin, Leash, and, of course, now Antrim and the two defeated teams in the quarterfinals of the Leinster Championship will basically play each other in a in a playoff a relegation playoff and of course the the loser of that will of course be relegated to the Joe McDonough Cup whereas the winner will progress to the first round of the qualifiers so um interesting and in total there'll be 11 teams in the Lee McCarthy Cup in 2021 and there will be again a preliminary round on the qualifiers, of course, which um, which we were just discussing, and then of course there will be qualifiers as normal, just like there were last year, of course. And then of course point number six here, and that is just the 2021 McDonough Cup and 2021 Ring Record and Mar Cup. So not really a lot of changes in terms of the uh, in the structure. It's just in terms of the dates. So the the finals of the McDonough Cup and the Leinster Senior Hurling Championship will be held on the 22nd of May. They will both be held on the same day, I believe. So they'll be both be held. Okay, interesting stuff, nonetheless. And the 2021 club window provisions and this is obviously something I wanted to discuss as well. Of course, the club window, of course, came before the All-Ireland Championship last year. Obviously, that was a situation that changed. Of course, you know, the All-Ireland Championship was supposed to be in summer as normal last year and then it got moved because of the whole COVID situation. Clubs came back first and then inter-county after, whereas this year, or 2021, is essentially the other way around. Um, so it says here, club competitions, largely without county players, can take place in the spring and early summer months. Uh, uninterrupted main club ch club championship window from July 24th, 25th to October 23rd, 24th and the provincial club championship window uh, from 16th to 17th of October to November 27th, 28th. So again, that's going to be interesting as well. It's going to be interesting to see will a lot of counties run their club championship after the inter-county window 
again, it's it's probably going to depend a lot on how counties are doing. If counties are still in the championship and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Hopefully, it is all you know a separate window because I did really enjoy that about the club championship last year. I enjoyed the fact that you could see games from Mayo, you could see games from Kerry with a lot of their inter county stars, and hopefully that is the case for uh, for next year as well. And it also says here, suggested provincial draws are not made until all Ireland quarter final. Uh, county champions from the teams involved not to be involved in round one quarter finals in provincial club championships where possible. Uh, all Ireland club championship semi finals in December, and the 2021 All Ireland club finals will take place in January 2022. So it's going to be a long year for a lot of uh, for a lot of inter county players, without doubt. So of course that is the the structure for the uh, for the 2021. All Ireland Championship, uh, Club Championship, National Football Leagues, everything GEA related in 2021. I will leave a, a link to the article down below if you want to go ahead and check it out. Um, hopefully, I've got everything spot on there. Of course, there's a lot of changes, a lot of different details. So there might have been one or two things I might have missed, but do let me know down in the comments below. Of course, what you think and yeah, look, listen, you know the National League and group stages. That's certainly going to be interesting and. Um, obviously the Taltian Cup as well and it's going to be interesting to see how it all does pan out and obviously in uh, in 2020 I think we had a very successful championship in my opinion I think we've seen a lot of things that can work I think it's something that the GA can adopt moving forward but at the same time you do understand why they've gone for that geographical format because of the way things are going at the moment so look listen it's going to be interesting to see what happens but do let me know down in the comments below what you uh, what you thought of the the structural changes and the whole overview for GEA in 2021. So yeah, do let me know down in the comments below what you thought. Leave a like, subscribe. My name is Aaron and I'll see you in the next one.